Well, every year the most high profile event for the National Civil Rights Museum is the Freedom Award. It's every October and they award, uh, give the award to three different individuals for different, uh, different walks of life. Some have been very famous. We've had uh, Magic Johnson, President Jimmy Carter, John Legend, I mean the list goes on and on. Uh, and this year one of the honorees uh, was Fred Smith, the uh, uh, Memphian and, and um, uh, founder of and CEO, former CEO of FedEx. He received the award and he was asked about that uh, on the red carpet as you see there uh, today, er, earlier this week. Um, the great African American built FedEx from pilots to senior vice presidents to engineers, to pick up and delivery people. I mean, that's what it was, that's what it's all about. Giving people opportunity. All right, Reverend Whalen, we know that uh, Fred Smith is a Republican. We know the Republicans have uh, taken some heat lately for not exactly being very pro-civil rights or human rights, and that bothers some people that he received the award. What's your, your feelings about it? Uh, I am very glad he received the award. You know, Richard, there once was a time many years ago when there was an entity called Memphis City Schools, and they were the largest employer in the city of Memphis, and FedEx was right behind or just ahead. Uh, man, if it weren't for Federal Express, Black folk in Memphis would be SOL, man. And some people know what I mean by <laughs> SOL. We do. Uh, I am very, listen, man, whoever it is that's, that's opposing Fred Smith getting the Civil Rights uh, Award, we can argue about civil rights later, and I'm sure we'll have an opportunity between now and the next election to, to talk about that. But man, Federal Express has made a lot of black folk comfortable financially. Has, has promoted a lot of black people, has, has shown how blacks and whites and others can work together uh, to achieve great corporate and financial success for this city. The city of Memphis owes Federal Express, I said. Uh, hard to disagree. I Is there a, a single individual in the city who's had more of influence in terms of lifting people black and white out of poverty than Fred Smith? No question about it. And I, I dare say that uh, most people in this community either know somebody or have somebody in their family who has worked at FedEx, at least in some fashion. Or their form. church. Or, uh, or their church. Or certainly in their church. Um, I agree with Ken wholeheartedly on this one. Um, this really was an award that does not necessarily, it was awarded to Fred Smith, but it was for FedEx. And I think he accepted it in the right way by giving recognition to the people who built FedEx, the people who worked at FedEx, and the fact that FedEx is such an integral part of this community in so many different ways. Ken talked about Memphis City Schools, but we can talk about the University of Memphis, we can talk about other things, including the National Civil Rights Museum, so, uh, and FedEx Forum, for crying out loud. So uh, I just don't think that uh, anybody who's complaining about his lack of uh, 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 appreciation or his, his lack of involvement in civil rights, uh, let's argue that another day, and let's talk about um, the contribution that FedEx has made to this community. Sam, there is kind of a political side to this, though, and that is just how uh, Fred chose to answer it. And I thought it was interesting, uh, to Otis's point, uh, to basically say, I don't really deserve this award. The award should go to all the many folks who helped build my company who are African American. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I'm qualified to um, talk about whether or not Fred Smith should have gotten the Freedom Award or not. Uh, instead, I, I'd like to sort of talk about the two other recipients of the Freedom Award, Isabel Wilkerson and Taylor Branch, who have made really compelling and integral contributions to our history books. And you should read Isabel Wilkerson's book, The Warmth of Other Sons, as well as Taylor Branch's trilogy about the Civil Rights Movement. And that first book by Taylor Branch in that trilogy, Parting the Waters, has some very interesting anecdotes about the effort to register black people to vote in Haywood County, Tennessee, which is the only other majority black county in Tennessee and is the site of Blue Oval City. And, you know, that's, if you read that book and the early chapters of that and you see the struggles the Department of Justice, the federal government in this country had registering people to vote in the South in the mid fifties, that should tell you a lot about, you know, our history and, and really give you some context as we embark on a huge project in that area. And your point That's about voter really registration is, is, really is well taken too, because we all know there are efforts to minimize uh, people's ability to vote for different reasons and right. lots of people wanting to get their fingers in that pie right. and overturn elections if, if possible, depending on who gets elected. Uh, 
you know, that, that's, it's interesting that they would choose someone who is such a leader when it comes to voter registration. Well, and of course, the Civil Rights Museum has always done that. They've, they've always reached out there and gotten people uh, and recognized them and give them the awards who have been really groundbreaking in a lot of different areas. You mentioned some of them, but the list just is, is, is much too long for us to talk about here. Sidney Poitier and uh, even uh, Desmond Tutu and, uh, you know, people like that. It's, it's just a wonderful award. Uh, and, and Sam is absolutely right. The other two award winners are very well deserving. And when you zoom out a little bit farther, Reverend Ken, uh, you look at all those names. I think sometimes here in Memphis we forget what a crown jewel the National Civil Rights Museum is in this community and the attention it brings to that movement and to Memphis. Well, and I think you're absolutely right in that. And my dad was one of the original uh, board members. They had a lot of knockdown, drag out fights, man. Uh, <laughs> Otis knows about this. It was, it was something else. <laughs> but uh, with that said, man, I, I love to celebrate Memphis. I love to celebrate the Freedom Awards, but we need to keep this in mind as well, especially on, on the heels of what Sam said about the other two honorees and, and Richard Wright having to leave Memphis and, and all that kind of thing. Listen, man, FedEx can't hire, can't get enough employees hired. FedEx can't keep employees. The, the people who apply for jobs at FedEx, by and large, are black young people who are not prepared. Uh, a lot of the young people who get hired at FedEx are not good employees. We just got to face this, man. We can celebrate Memphis, but we have got to challenge ourselves and try to address the real problems that still exist and are getting deeper. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to let that be the last word. That is our show for today. I want to thank Sam and Reverend Ken Whalen and Otis for being here. And I want to thank you at home. We'll see you next week for ABC 24 This Week.